good morning everybody now let us switch to that uh, fourth theme environment now in this uh, theme as you know three readings a reading that is environment an interview by nhk radio japan interviewing wangari mate that nobel prize winner peace prize and environmental activist for her efforts in protecting the environment she won that nobel peace prize b reading that is will the dreamer wake or the species those endangered species would forever be extinct whereby our grandchild does mean that uh, our future generations would not know what a tiger what a polar bear what a song warbler they are okay and uh, see reading there is how this environmental pollution degradation affected three villages spreading uh, across the world one from nigeria other from india and the other last one is from russia ukraine earlier ussr now environment a reading interview with wangari mathai environmental activist and a nobel prize winner wangari mathai started the green belt movement and also fought for equal rights for women in africa so she started that green belt movement as the name indicates planting hundreds of thousands of lakhs of crores of trees and green belt movement and fought for equal rights for women in africa she is the first african woman to win the nobel peace prize read the excerpts from her interview with uh, nippon hoso kyokai that is nhk radio japan 2004 december no nhk radio the interviewer how did you become aware of the environment wangari mate from time we started we were trying to respond to the basic needs of people in the rural areas in the rural areas people are complaining uh, about uh, their basic needs and people were asking for clean drinking water for food for energy which is mostly firewood for building material and fodder for the animals what those basic requirements are basic essentials are clean drinking water and uh, firewood that is energy to cook food and all and fodder for their animals and uh, to have a roof over their heads a bit of uh, okay wood and all these are the very basic necessities they are struggling for those rural women and all these come from the land no doubt all these come from the land clean drinking water fodder okay firewood and wood and all so we knew that uh, what the people in the rural areas were asking for had to do with the environment no doubt all the things had to do with the environment they didn't have those things because the environment was degraded the reason for they not getting these uh, basic uh, necessities was the degradation of uh, environment so from the very beginning we understood that we have to rehabilitate the environment so they decided this degraded environment should be rehabilitated upgraded to the best possible way okay then only uh, could the problem be solved the forested mountains were the source of water and the source of rain the mountains that were uh, thick with the forest and all those forested mountains were the source of uh, rain so when you deforest you cause a shortage of water and a change of rainfall patterns so those forested mountains if they are deforested and no more water could be uh, be there on that okay so mounted forest straight way being bald that water fallen uh, on those uh, bald uh, mountains they would straight way flow down and uh, ran into the streams and finally uh, would end up wasted okay meeting the oceans and the seas and therefore people are not able to get food and water therefore in order for them to have good environment that can sustain their livelihoods 
it is important to have a government that accounts to them so what is important is an accountable government the account the government that accounts for its people the government should be accountable uh, that protects them that protects their interests that is concerned about their lives so the government what qualities that good government should have the second question how is peace connected to a good environment okay ma'am now how peace is connected to good environment she was asked many wars that are fought in the world are fought over natural resources many wars that have been fought in the world okay they have been fought over the uh, natural resources as we all know these natural resources though seem to be um, plenty in nature but they are very limited certainly they are not unlimited hence the uh, words uh, renewable and non renewable resources and all some wars are fought because the environment is so degraded that it is not able to support communities and so they fight over the little that is left the environment is so degraded that what is left is so little over uh, that so little left okay they uh, started fighting with each other so this was the main reason for the uh, wars that uh, were waged in the past and now also <coughs> others are fought because some people want to take a lot of the resources and uh, because of man's greedy nature okay a few wars are fought because of uh, these uh, strong uh, people maybe they have that uh, muscle power or money power and with that uh, they wanted to have more resources they wanted to control them and to keep many other people uh, out now whether this happens at the national level or at the regional level or even at the global level this exploitation so it may happen at the uh, regional level or national level or even at a uh, global level sooner or later there is discontent no doubt the result would be discontent asantrupti and when that discontent is strong enough there is conflict the result of that discontent okay if it is more and more and more no doubt one unfortunate moment that would result in conflict that is war so good management of the natural resources number 1 equitable distribution of these resources natural resources number 2 is important for peace so what are the two things that are required for peace number 1 good management of natural resources these natural resources are to be well managed so this good management of uh, natural resources and equitable distribution of these uh, resources okay so it doesn't it sh shouldn't matter whether the people are uh, okay so strong or uh, weak particularly uh, <coughs> their uh, uh, social status and uh, so, uh, their levels and all okay irrespective equitable distribution of these uh, natural resources at the same time good management of the natural resources is not possible if you don't have democratic space so of course good management of natural resources how it is possible unless we have democratic space what do you mean by democratic space okay every person okay should have a right to speak right to express uh, their opinions and moreover uh, each and every one's uh, opinion if not all collectively the opinion should be honored that is the meaning of democratic space respect for human beings no doubt okay so after uh, fulfilling all those basic requirements uh, okay a human being okay so starves for uh, basic dignity so um, respect for human beings respect for human rights and giving other people dignity people certainly want to be uh, treated dignified that's why the three themes are related what those three themes okay they so beautifully compared those three themes with an Uh, african stool or for that matter matter any stool that has three legs and the three legs one leg is peace one leg is peace the other leg is good governance and the third leg is sustainable management of uh, resources with these three legs we can put that uh, mm, basin or plate on which we can sit that is nothing but uh, development she says when you have those three legs now you can put the basin which is development okay any of these uh, three legs all three legs are there but any of these three legs if they uh, uh, one of them okay is shorter than the other two then no doubt the basin could not be balanced on those three legs 
it does mean that there should be a peace and good governance and a sustainable management of uh, natural resources and uh, if you try to balance that stool okay without those three not even those three even a shorter one with uh, it won't to happen what won't happen the development we have not shared our resources uh, equitably the natural resources are uh, not shared equitably <coughs> we have allowed some people especially those in power to acquire a lot at the expense of the majority who the majority are these vulnerable people these oppressed people these poor people these weak people okay so this voiceless people at the uh, cost of those voiceless people okay exploiting them these uh, rich people maybe they have that uh, as i uh, said earlier uh, muscle power or money power or maybe their voice or any other Uh, factor that would give them strength and all like political clout and all and we have also engaged in conflict the result is uh, uh, war so please understand this answer because the question is in what way uh, good environment is connected to peace third question what was the environment like when you were young and how did you go about saving it ma'am how was the environment when you were born now certainly you feel that now the environment is what it was uh, what it was you know the sorry now the environment is not what it uh, was now how are you going to save it to bring it how it uh, was if not to the full extent to some extent you want to restore it how you want to do it she was asked by this nhk radio when i was a child which is almost more than 50 years ago okay she is uh, uh, talking about her childhood environment the environment was very pristine very beautiful and very green neat clean okay uh, less pollution we were a british colony just like india before 1947 august okay so this country also her country also was a british colony and the british government at that time started to clear um, cut the indigenous forests indigenous means um, natural to that areas in our forested mountains because they wanted to establish commercial plantations you understand commercial plantations okay the plantations okay so with which we can do some commerce commercial plantations they wanted to do uh, there by cutting those uh, indigenous uh, forests who the rulers that is the british government and exotic species of trees uh, such as what those uh, commercial plantations like pines from the northern hemisphere and the eucalyptus from australia such a commercial plantations they wanted to plant there in place of those uh, indigenous forests what the result was okay total imbalance uh, biodiversity these trees are very nice of course they are very nice they grow tall and they grow very fast but as they grow they destroy all the local biological diversity of course these commercial plantations like pine and eucalyptus they are very fine they grow very tall but uh, in their growth okay what they uh, do is the side effect is they damage the local biological diversity all the flora and fauna disappeared so although we were getting commercial timber for the growing timber industry we also destroyed our local flora and fauna of course they were getting uh, good amount of uh, uh, timber for their uh, business and for their commerce and all but uh, uh, what they lost is their local flora and fauna <clears throat> flora and fauna means uh, plant life and animal life you may be knowing as a result these forests which were the water towers were no longer able to contain the water so the result is these forested mountains okay which had been the um, water uh, towers okay because that uh, fallen rain uh, would uh, store there as uh, reservoirs and like okay natural reservoirs so these forested mountains act like uh, Uh, water towers and uh, they were no longer able to contain the water so when the rains fell the water straight away ran downstream and it ended up in the lakes and oceans instead of going down into the underground reservoir so instead of going down into the underground reservoir so that the underground water tables would be up so that water getting wasted going into the oceans and uh, seas so that it could come back to us in the form of uh, rivers if the underground water tables are raised then no doubt okay it would come back to us in the form of rivers 
one thing we noted is that not only did the rain um, pattern change of course the result is the rain patterns change because of this deforestation and the commercial plantations what are the changes that have taken place okay yeah, are um, there is a change in rain pattern change um, uh, rain patterns the rains became less but also the rivers uh, started drying up now the um, perennial rivers they too uh, started uh, becoming drying up we lost our local biological diversity so there is a lot of damage to our environment no doubt the uh, thing is a lot of damage to our uh, environment that's why in 1975 at the very first united nations conference for women in mexico many of the women were saying that was in 1975 a world body conference that is united nations uh, conference for women that in mexico at that uh, global level uh, uh, conference conducted by that uh, world body in 1975 the women actually raised their voice against the basic necessities that uh, surprised Wangari Mate and that was the time she decided to do something to rehabilitate the environment and uh, started that uh, green belt uh, movement. What the women attended that uh, United Nations conference at Mexico, what they said, we need food, see the fun, okay. At that global level meeting conducted by that uh, um, old body, what they are asking, we need food, we need water. We need clean drinking water. We need fodder for our animals. Basic necessities. And I was wondering, okay, what has happened? So she wondered what had happened. Why they are asking such basic necessities for, okay, at this uh, world level conference. So these are the things that were there 20 years ago when I was a child. Because when she was a child, all those things, okay, so people uh, uh, took them as for granted. The environment had changed and... Uh, that is when I started this campaign to restore the vegetation and to restore the land and to rehabilitate the forest. That was the moment. Okay. So I got my calling. Okay. And uh, uh, decided to rehabilitate the environment. Let us see how the interview uh, headed further in the next episode. Thank you.